Do you celebrate Easter? Do you think if Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah, and his disciples were here today that they would celebrate Easter? I'm telling you that they wouldn't. Why? Let's look into it. And if you're having questions and you're reading the Bible and wondering, why doesn't it ever say the word Easter in the Bible? Nothing even close. Why does it never talk about eggs, Easter eggs? Uh, why does it never talk about the hare or rabbits? All of these symbols. Where did this all come from? Let's talk about this now. So I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. You can study this and see videos and read books about it as I have. There is a lot of documentation and literature about where the um, spring festival of Easter comes from. And the name isn't even that different. Estar, Estarte, Ostra. It comes from uh, German words and even um, Mesopotamian words. Their fertility god, it has to do with fertility goddess and a spring goddess. The symbol of that spring goddess was the hare or the rabbit. The eggs are also there because of their an obvious fertility symbol. Not only the Catholic Church, but even the Protestants have taken all of these symbols and not even questioned, not even asked about the name. Why don't they call it something like they do in European languages like Pasqua? Um, yeah, they'll say Paschal, they'll use it as an adjective uh, sometimes, but why do they hold on to the word Easter? Really weird, but I know why, and that's because the whole uh, celebration is pagan in origin, and it's a, it's a coupling of a pagan thing with Christ's resurrection. And you might say, well, what's wrong with that? We're still thinking about Christ's resurrection, and from that perspective, that seems to be true. The problem is scripture. Let's look at it. Please read Deuteronomy chapter 12 verses 30 and 31. And this applies to Easter and Christmas and any other once past pagan holiday or celebration that has been taken and uh, taken and used by the churches. What does it say in verse 30, Deuteronomy 12, 30? Take heed to yourselves that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Gods with a lowercase g, of course. I also will do likewise. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. For every abomination to the Lord, which he hates, they have done to their gods. For they burn even their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. So, you might say, oh, but it's, it's, uh, it's the resurrection of Christ. Yes, the resurrection is good. The Passover, the biblical Passover, read, read about that in Leviticus 23. But forget about Easter with all of its pagan origins. And you might say, yeah, but I don't look at it that way. Read this scripture again. Read this again. Deuteronomy 12, verses 30 and 31. God says, don't take what's pagan and evil and put my name on it and then say it's good. He doesn't accept that. It says it right there. It's not my words. It's in the Bible. And the disciples, they knew scripture. Jesus obviously knew scripture. He was the word. It was his words. They didn't even have the New Testament written yet. It was just being formed uh, after, after that. Uh, so they knew scripture and they knew these words and they knew that it said not to combine the pagan thing of the all of these na the nations all around Israel had lots of pagan gods and and idols and of, of gold and silver and God said don't do that don't take it and it applies to us today just because it's thousands of years later that doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to us taking these pagan things. So you have to ask yourself, why do you celebrate something called Easter? Look it up, find out. And, and what's your excuse for it? I'm sure there's an excuse. That's why they write books and they give all these apologies about all of these things that they do wrong. The Bible says it's wrong to do it. Just because some priest or somebody tells you that it's okay, that doesn't trump the Bible. 
God's word is above everyone. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. And he says that this is the way that we're supposed to, we're not supposed to follow these false gods. We're supposed to follow his holy days and read about them in Leviticus 23 if you want to know the true holy days. Um, but here's a simple question. Why also, I, I don't know why you would want to celebrate something with all of these fertility symbols of, it seems like all of these holidays from Christmas to Easter, they're all about fertility and drunken orgies and um, very carnal, earthy, uh, worshiping symbols of the earth, the evergreen tree, and the, all, all of the strange things that are involved it's it's just and it's called an abomination and it is an abomination we should see it as an abomination because we should see it the same way that god sees it and also when it comes down to it uh why do catholics and protestants um and most christians have such a hard time counting to three let's take a look in matthew 12 verse 40 these are jesus own words he says for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, right? He's comparing himself to Jonah, who was swallowed by the great fish. Three days and three nights. So will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So you have to come up with some invention to explain what, that he didn't actually say three days. He didn't just say, uh, three days. I'll be in there. Three nights. No, he was specific. He said three days and three nights. Read it for yourself in verse 40, Matthew 12, 40. He says three days and three nights. How do you get three days and three nights from you, the, you celebrate Good Friday? Um, Friday night and then all day Saturday. And he resurrected, they believe, Sunday morning. But it says then in Luke... Uh, Luke 24, 1, take a look there. In Luke 24, 1, it says, now, now remember, Jews, how did they calculate a day? A day started and ended at sunset, not at midnight. So when, as soon as the sun went down, that's when the day starts. Jews still calculate their days that way. Uh, so do I. So now, on the first day of the week, it says in Luke 24, verse 1. Now, on the first day of the week, the first day of the week, the Sabbath, Shabbat, was the seventh day of the, is the seventh day of the week. So, right after that, when does Shabbat end? It ends at sunset on what we would call Saturday night. And Saturday, it starts Friday night at sunset, and it ends at Saturday night as soon as the sun goes down. Shabbat is over, the seventh day is over, the first day begins. The first day of the week begins right at sunset on Saturday night, what we would call Saturday night. So it says, now on the first day, so this can be any time after that, but then they, it is a little bit later because they say, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning. So now this is open to interpretation. Early in the morning? What's early in the morning? Six o'clock in the morning for us? Seven? Very early in the morning? Would that be five? I don't know. That's up to interpretation. But very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. And then in verse 2, but they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. You know the rest of the story. Jesus was already resurrected by then. He resurrected before they got there, obviously. Um, so he said, though, I go by his words because God does not lie. God sticks to his word. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said that he would be in the belly of the Son of Man, will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Three days and three nights. So this, if you count it backwards, right, that's three full days. Three days and three nights. He didn't say, well, one full day and a part of one day and a part of another day. Um, and then at least it, it, it overlaps three days a little bit, right? A little bit of Friday, all of Saturday, a little bit of Sunday. There's your three days. He didn't say that. He said three days and three nights. He was specific about it. 
Uh, you know, and it's it's not it's not a big deal. The point is, though, if if you can't count the three correctly and follow and trust Jesus words, what else are you getting wrong? So um, this we need to take seriously. Please take a look at Leviticus 23 and see the holy days. They are outlined there. Each holy day points to Jesus and to each plan of salvation for us. There is something there. The, he is the Passover lamb. Dig into it. Study it. There's so much to learn. Uh, leave all the pagan stuff behind. It has nothing to do with us. Um, and we're com commanded. We're commanded in Deuteronomy by God himself. We are commanded to have nothing to do with those abominations.